We've looked at several artists in the past and how their image corresponds to their music. In previous videos, I did this through the analysis of melodies. Today I would like to look at image from an entirely visual perspective. That doesn't mean we won't talk about melodies and chords as they come up, but since aesthetics are a powerful tool for any artist, I feel like I should make at least one video explaining how an artist's image can manifest itself in music videos and artwork. If at any point in your life you're planning to make a music video, or if you're just interested in the deeper machinations of the production of a megastar, then this video will show you a side of the music industry that you may have never considered. For what is a first on the artist series, we're going to go through Adele's music chronologically, highlighting connections of her music videos to her image and music. So let's start with the most important question. What are you thinking of when I say Adele? Whatever it is you're thinking of right now, it is probably because a marketing team positioned her this way. And again, as with my other videos, this is not to say that Adele is faking her personality. I consider this more of a smart mixture of streamlining and embellishments of her character. So, do you have an image in your head? The image I came up with is that of the old soul underdog. Let's start with the first half, the old soul. One of the most notable things about Adele has always been her young age. When you listen to her music, she sounds like she's in her 40s, as if she's lived a long, rough life. This difference in perceived and actual age has been underlined time and time again by the team. How about the titles of the albums? 19, 21, 25? To me, this is not just reminding us of how young she is. It's almost like saying, this is a reborn star of yesteryear. There is a sense of instant classic, of old-fashioned powerhouse diva. Adele seems like one of the great operatic gala singers of last decade. This is reinforced by a number of details, like the classic eyeliner and fake lashes, or the voluminous, often pinned up hair. You can also sense the old-fashioned flair in the artwork of her albums, which are mostly black and white, or sepia. For the lighting, one single hard light source is used, as opposed to the two or three point soft lighting setup used by most pop stars. This makes a big difference because it means that one side of Adele's face is always in the dark, which gives the pictures a classic film noir kind of look. This, by the way, is revisited in Adele's logo, which casts shadows in exactly the same way. But of course, you can hear the old soul in the music and lyrics as well, starting with the fact that the arrangements use real instruments, typically piano, guitar, live drums, bass, and strings. Rumor has it even uses a call and response type of backing choir, a clear callback to soul and blues. On top of that, Half of 21 was recorded live, meaning the musicians and Adele actually sat together in a room and performed the songs. This was the idea of industry giant Rick Rubin, who loved Adele's live sound. And while recording this way used to be common practice, nowadays this is unusual because the way most music is recorded today is by tracking each musician individually, one after the other. Also unusual is that Adele doesn't use autotune, which again makes her sound less modern. As Ryan Tatter remarked after recording Rumor has it, she sang it once, top to bottom, pitch perfect, she didn't miss a note. I looked at the engineer, then at her, and said, Adele, I don't know what to tell you, but I've never had anyone do that in 10 years. We'll talk more about this idea of the old soul when we get to the songs. Now let's look at the other side of her image. As many of you know, England is known to champion the underdog, the person that wins against all odds, that triumphs against oppression. Think Ricky Gervais, a typical down-to-earth working man who became a megastar in his 40s after creating the hit TV series The Office. Adele has a lot in common with Ricky. She's British, she's from the working class, a fact that is often underlined by the outfits of her musicians on stage. Hey, look at the caretaker outfit! See? They all wear them. Oh, you've gone bright red. Go on then. <laughs> then, she's overweight and no classic beauty. She's brutally honest and curses like a sailor. And as we discussed, she feels old. All things that don't belong in a world of the rich and beautiful. There's another person that this description reminds me of, also British, also well-loved. What about Bridget Jones? Am I the only one who sees this and thinks of this? Obviously, one is a tragedy and one is a comedy, but the protagonist is the same, the loser. 
the left behind. So now that we have a good idea of how Adele portrays herself publicly, let's go through each and every one of her music videos and look for how she brings those points across, starting with her very first release from 2007, Hometown Glory. And look at it. If I hadn't told you this was her first video, would you have assumed it? Visually, her image is all there. The makeup, the hair, it's all pretty close to 2015's Hello. Then there's the contrast-rich one-point lighting we've talked about. And did you notice the sepia tone backgrounds? It's all there in her very first video. On top of that, we are hearing a ballad, piano and strings. And even though I consider the song one of her musically less strong songs, it packs a powerful message. Look at the first few lines of the lyrics. I've been walking in the same way as I did, missing out the cracks in the pavement and turning my heel and strutting my feet. This is the underdog idea we talked about, showing us her normal, approachable side. And almost magically, she doesn't hesitate to show us the other half of her image in the next four lines. Is there anything I can do for you, dear? Is there anyone I could call? No, and thank you, please, madame. I ain't lost, just wondering. By talking about her childhood as if it was a long time ago, she reminds us of her ripe inner age. And as we're gonna see, Adele does this quite a lot. Further on, the lyrics go, shows that we ain't gonna stand shit, shows that we are united. Thereby, again saying, I'm one of you. I'm just a regular person, I'm not special, I'm no star. Which feeds back into her underdog idea, of course. Her second video for Chasing Pavements goes in a similar direction. Again, sepia tones dominate and shadows play a major part in the lighting. Something rather unusual for a video shot at daytime. Musically, I consider this Adele at her best. It's another power ballad, but this time we're hearing more instruments, most important of which, the very laid back drum groove. If you write for drums yourself, I consider this a must hear, as the drums lay out the story of the song perfectly. Listen to this transition from chorus to second verse and see how the drums help bring the energy back down, what I call negative tension. Looking at the harmonic melodic relationship, Adele does something really interesting here. In her first verse, she hits some really interesting notes with her melody. A lot of minor and major sevens, a flat nine, but when the drums kick in for the continued verse, the chords change and along with them, the emotions felt behind every interval. The melody stays the same, but what used to be a very colorful opening to a song, showcasing Adele's soulful voice in all of its colors, now becomes a simpler melodic construct which fits better with the band. As you can see, I'm analyzing the melody here against the chords again, not the key. I talked about this in depth in the Bruno Mars video. Suffice it to say that Adele has a more old fashioned, old soul approach to harmony. Another nod to her age hides in the vocal performance of her penultimate chorus. Here she sings almost like a little girl. Check this out. Should I give up? Oh, should I just keep chasing pavements even if it leads nowhere? Seems like she had it all figured out, huh? Well, what seems like a well-calculated first bunch of releases is quickly turned around in Adele's third single, Cold Shoulder. If you're not a fan, you probably haven't even heard this one yet. On YouTube, this is the Adele song with the least clicks, and of all of her songs, this one did the poorest in the charts. While we have an okay song here with some decent lyrics, the hip-hop beat and fast-cut video go against what we've come to like in Adele. While the lighting and ice statues work, the song feels too sassy, and Amy Winehouse had that market covered already. And so what happens next in Adele's career? Based on a recommendation of her manager, she covers Bob Dylan's Make You Feel My Love. And we're back in the game. If there is a definition of an underdog music video, it would be this. Adele shows herself without any kind of styling, no makeup, no fancy coat. This emotional nakedness is underlined by the production, which doesn't enhance her vocals in any way. As far as I can tell, there is no production, very little cueing, no reverb, no delays, it's pretty much just her. So that's all the songs from 19. It takes Adele two years to release Rolling in the Deep, with its hammering piano parts and soul backing vocals. Lyrically, this is not too far off what we have come to expect from her. But the music video shows us Adele in a new light, 
that of a powerful blues slash soul singer with an attitude. Like in many of her videos, she's sitting down, facing away from the camera, which creates a sense of being walled off, of a person that lives inside their own head. We saw this before in Hometown Glory, chasing pavements and make you feel my love. And like most pop music on the radio, Adele's music isn't about connecting with others, it's about an inner turmoil, a fire starting in her heart, to quote the first lines of the song. When we don't see Adele, we see metaphoric images of her inner struggles. While other artists often feature actors in their music videos to tell a story and show how their music applies to everyone's life, Adele's videos almost exclusively feature her. We're supposed to feel with her, not like her. After rolling in the deep, we finally get someone like you. Many, myself included, see this as Adele's greatest piece of writing to date. Against the label's protest, she didn't record it with a full band and chose to go with just a piano. The only other element used are some backing vocals in the bridge. Also, for the first time we see black and white in the music video, along with the characteristic trench coat symbolizing shelter, and again, her absent look. The next couple of songs don't get a music video, and except for Skyfall, we don't hear from Adele until a release of 25 some years later. With the help of industry giants like Max Martin, Ryan Tedder, The Smeezingtons, Mark Ronson and Shellback, 25 breaks sales records all over the globe. After titling 21 her breakup album, Adele refers to 25 as her makeup album, which is symbolized by her looking straight into the camera on the album cover. This is unusual for Adele because it says, I see you. In other words, I'm not only focused on myself anymore. Hello, another power ballad pushes further into pop territory than Adele's earlier songs. Everything is polished to perfection. The production is unbelievably detailed, with one of my favorite things being the automated reverb on every hello. Listen to this. But I ain't done much healing. Hello. Can you hear? The drums play an important role here again, although unlike Chasing Pavements, here the production takes care of the storytelling by the use of a filter. Compare this in the second chorus. So hello from the other side. To this in the last chorus. Can you hear how the snare sounds a little brighter? This is one of the many techniques I lay out in the addiction formula. And sorry for being a commercial here again, but that's what ultimately pays for these videos. So if you're interested in how to tell your song's story the modern way, this is where it's at. The music video to Alo is interesting as well. While it's playing it safe in terms of coloring and style, there's a couple of things out of the ordinary here. First, there's a very long intro of over a minute without any music whatsoever. This manages two things. It builds anticipation and calms us down, which is important to truly enjoy a ballad. While this probably wouldn't work for a lesser known artist, here this marks the beginning of something new after a long period of silence, the time since her last album. In the first close-up of the video, something atypical happens as well. When Adele opens her eyes, she's looking right at us, the symbolism of which we've already discussed. In terms of lighting, the shadows are less harsh, which might just be because it looks better, but knowing that lighting professionals were at work here, it might just symbolize Adele's new understanding that not everything's black and white in this world, and that there are gray areas, that if a relationship fails, both parties are responsible. Lyrically, like the rest of the album, Hello strikes an apologetic tone. The chorus peaks on the line, I'm sorry for everything that I've done. But we also see the old soul make a revival when she speaks of after all these years or when we were younger. But Adele is no underdog anymore, as she realizes herself in the line, I've forgotten how it felt before the world fell at our feet. Things have changed. Adele is all grown up, she's a megastar and married with a kid. In Send My Love, she says, we gotta let go of all of our ghosts. We both know we ain't kids no more. This line is also picked up in the video. While it starts with a confident grown-up woman, as the video progresses and her ghosts come into play, we see them dancing, almost like children. The video ends with a disappointed looking Adele, as if to say, I wish we could be kids again. So there you have it, the life of an artist. It's very much hoped that with her current condition of not being able to sing, I will be able to make a part two to this video someday. So what should you take from this video? My goal is for you to come out of this with a toolbox that just grew by a couple compartments. Have you considered using lighting to your advantage? How about colors, the way you sit, where you look, what you wear? All of these help us form an image of you, the artist. 
And most importantly, I know it can be quite scary to look at someone like Adele and think, oh my God, this is so much work, I could never do this. But the key is that you start. Some things will work automatically just because of who you are. The rest you will figure out in the process. Here I very much agree with Peter Drucker who says, what gets measured gets managed. Look at yourself critically and see where you can still improve. But at the same time, don't discourage yourself. In the beginning, you will be unhappy with the results. Retrain your mind to go from this could be better straight to the how. Skip the Ugh, I suck phase. Everyone has that phase. The only difference between successful people and less successful people is how fast you can get through it. Speed of implementation is key. With that said, I know it's been a long video. I would like to thank the Pop Song Professor for brainstorming ideas for this video. And naturally, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe, like, and share. And if you want to have a say in which artist I do next, you can find the survey right here. This is Freedom of Fantastic Mystic Songwriting, and thanks for watching.